This video shows you how to create and set up a team in MadPuck, so you can understand how each setting is used within the app. The demonstration will be on an Apple device, but you can follow along on Android without any issues, since the user interfaces are nearly identical. I'll point out any minor differences along the way. When you start MadPuck for the first time, you will see this Getting Started page which guides you through either creating a team or joining a team if one already exists. First, check with your team to make sure no one else has already created a MadPuck team that you can join. If you have created a team in the past, instead of seeing the Getting Started screen, you'll see a list of teams. In that case, you can click on the top menu to create a team with Add Team. Otherwise, select your role on the team, either staff member or parent. Either choice allows you to create the team in exactly the same way, and then create a new team. Team name is the full team name that is shown in the main players list. Let's go with Bar Down Bandits. Abbreviated team name. Here you want to choose a short team name up to four characters that will be shown when there is a shortage of space. For example, the scoreboard or stat screens. Let's go with Bar. Division and level. These are used in the teams list to distinguish between teams with similar names. So we're going to go with U12. And we'll go with double A. Skaters per side. How many players do you typically have? In other words, are you playing five on five or four on four hockey? We're going to go with five. Main team color. Choose a color to represent your team. This will be primarily used in the main team list. And then secondary color. Uh, choose a secondary color as appropriate for your team, although currently this color isn't used anywhere. Home location section. These are used as the default location when creating home games to avoid having to add them every time you have a home game. So choose the location you're playing at most often for your home games. So we're going to go Waterloo the, and Mad Puck Arena, which has not yet been built. And we'll go with Rink A and Dressing Room 8. Website and League Standings. You can add website links for your users to have quick access to important sites from the team dashboard. The next we're going to go with Madpuck and we'll leave the league standings empty. The next section contains game defaults. These are default settings that will be used when creating games and can be overridden for each game. Again choose values here that will be used most often to save time when creating games. First setting is running time. Turn the setting on, on to prevent the clock from stopping when there are stoppages in play. When it is off, a stoppage in play will cause the clock to stop and it must be restarted manually when the puck is dropped for a faceoff. So we're going to turn that on. Total default periods. How many periods are in a typical game and the typical length of each period and overtime. So we're going to we'll stick with the default 3, 10, 10 and we'll say 15 minutes for the last period. Uh, and then five minutes over time. And finally, subteams. Due to COVID, some teams are enrolling 16 players instead of the typical 15, and then dividing the group into two teams of eight and playing four and four hockey. This feature supports that form out of play against opponents. To be clear, it does not support inner squad games against players on the same MadPuck team or other MadPuck subteams, as MadPuck is designed to record events just from the perspective of one hockey team, in other words, the team you're creating here. Later, when you create a player, you can choose which subteam they're on, and when you create a game, you can choose which subteam is playing. Madpuck will use the subteam information to determine default attendance, which is used for games played in the cumulative stats. So enter the subteam names and abbreviated team names, just as we did for the main team. So let's go with uh, let's go with Team A. And the abbreviated team would we want similar to the main team, so we'll go with bar A and team B and bar B. Now that we have finished entering team information, you can click add uh, or on Android the check mark at the top right of the screen to create the team. Select the new team and you see the main team dashboard for the Bar Down Bandits. If you need to change any team settings, choose Edit from the menu. 
Now that your team is created, you have to add players, opponents, and segments before you can start adding games. Let's start with players. So choose the players card. Click add player or plus in the menu. If you enabled subteams when creating the team, first choose the subteam that this player is a member of. If the player changes subteams later, you can update this and the attendance for future games will be updating accordingly. Enter the player's first and last name and their uniform number. The player's first and last name and uniform numbers are used to identify the player in the event entry screens, so make sure they are set correctly. Choose the position of the player. This is also important to set correctly because it will affect where the player sh shows up when adding events. For example, goalies can be selected for shots against and centers will be more accessible when entering faceoffs. Choose which side the player shoots on or catches on for goalies. This is just for informational purposes. You can mark a player as an AP player. This is primarily used for attendance tracking. AP players are assumed to be absent for all games unless the coach manually marks them as present for a game. If they are not set as an AP player, they are rostered player and then assumed to be present for all games for attendance purposes unless the parent or coach manually marks them as absent for a game. You can also designate a player as captain or alternate captain. For inf this is just for informational purposes and it shows a C or A beside their name in the players list. Click add or check mark on Android to add the player. And then repeat for each player on the team. It is best to add all the players before you start inviting fans to the team. A fan is a player, parent, coach, or friend. And when you approve a fan, you will want to associate a player with the fan so the fan can see the cumulative stats and modify attendance for that player. I'll go into more detail about that in another video. Next we will add opponents, the teams you will be playing against. Choose the opponents card and click add opponent or add in the top bar and it will be a plus sign on Android. Enter the full team name and abbreviated team name. Similar to when you created your team, the abbreviated version will be used when there is limited screen space. So let's go with hat trick heroes and hero. Set the opponent's city, arena, and rink, which will be used as default values when playing away games against that opponent. Go with Kitchener and the odd and Kiwanis. Now, if the opponent is also using subteams and you want to track against the subteam for that opponent separately, just create two opponents and use different team names. Click Add or checkmark on Android to add the opponent. We now return back to the team dashboard and select Segments. Segments allow you to divide up the season into different groups of games and will be used for the cumulative stats to show stats for each segment. For example, you can see how many goals a player scored in regular season games versus tournament games. You choose how you want to divide up the season into segments. One way would be to create four segments, exhibition, regular, tournaments, and playoff, but you can get fancier. For example, you might want to create a segment per tournament or a segment for each playoff round. But keep in mind, each game can only be assigned to one segment. To add a segment, click Add Segment or plus in the top bar. Enter the segment name and start date. The segment date will be used to order the segments in the segments list and cumulative stats. Let's go ahead and add two segments, one for regular season and one for tournaments. So regular is our first one, and we'll say today's date. And the second one will be tournament. Tournaments, and let's say starting in December. You'll notice that the color is automatically assigned to each segment. Now there has been a little bit of work getting to this point, adding the team, players, opponents, and segments, but going forward this information won't change very often, and using the defaults that you have entered should make the data entry going forward much easier. 
Let's return to the team dashboard and we'll finish by showing you how to create a game. Select games, click add game or plus in the top bar. If you have enabled subteam support, you will first select the team that is playing, either the full team, which is the first option, or one of the subteams, so team A or team B. Now the next few fields will look slightly different on Android, but they use standard Android controls, so it should be familiar to most users. Next, select the opponent you'll be playing against and the segment the game should be assigned to. So we only created one opponent, so hat trick heroes, and then segment, let's choose regular game. And additionally, you can also manage the opponents and segments uh, directly from this screen by pressing on the buttons below the segment. Next, choose the date and time of the game. The time will default to the current hour for those instances when you're creating a game shortly before the team goes on the ice. But I suggest that you create the game ahead of time because there is a little bit of game setup that happens after you create the game on the server. And if you have low coverage at the rink, it might take a while for the game to be fully created and visible to other fans. Additionally, creating the game ahead of time allows you to take advantage of the attendance feature in MadPuck. If a player can't make a game, parents can mark their child as absent and the coaches will get a notification and can call up a player, an AP player, if necessary. So let's choose the next hour. The next, next select the location, home or away. If you select home, the home defaults that you set when creating your team are used. And if you select away, the opponent's default location is used. You can make adjustments as necessary. So we'll choose away. You can also adjust the bench, which is useful for tournament games. Next, uh, you're going to choose the running time. This defaults to the value you set when creating your team. Turning this setting on prevents the clock from stopping when there are stoppages in play. When it is off, any time you enter a stoppage, when entering game events, the clock will be stopped and must be restarted manually when the puck is dropped for a faceoff. Total periods and period lengths. It is important to set these values correctly because they will be used for the goalie's goals against average when determining how long a goalie has played in a game. When you're finished, click Add or checkmark an Android at the top right to add the game. This concludes the team setup process. Over the next few weeks, I'll be creating additional videos which show additional MadPuck features like entering game events, managing fans, and viewing stats. Please subscribe to this channel to be notified when new videos are available. I hope your kids are able to get back on the ice soon and hopefully playing some games. See you at the rink.